him to create millions of Jesuses without father and without mother, just like that. But who's going to breastfeed those little Jesuses? She needs a mother. Jesus needed a mother. So God gave her the good news, and he says, so was Jesus Christ born. This the Muslim believes without any proofs on the outside, without any convincing from the Christians. We believe, because we know this mighty messenger of God, Muhammad, had no reason to lie. Why would he tell us all these things? If he had created this religion of Islam, if he had concocted it, surely he must have that imagination that sooner or later my followers will have come into conflict with the Christians. And if there is a conflict, let me give them some strong weapon to deal the Christians with, how to subdue them. And one of the strongest of weapons is ridicule. It's far better than philosophy and psychology and logic and all these things. Far better, far superior to all these weapons, tools, in an argument or a debate is ridicule. Laugh the guy off, man. Laugh him off. Very easy. You come to me with an idea that a Jewish girl 2,000 years ago, she heard some voices, and thereon she became pregnant, and she gave birth to a child. You want me to believe that? I'm asking you. I said, you know, you have a sister. You know her too well. From childhood, you grew together. Maybe you were twins, one boy, one girl. And you are thinking like-minded. And you know how immaculate your sister is. She never spoke a lie in her life, as far as you know. And this sister of yours is telling you. She says, you know, brother, you know, I heard some voices. And now, this is the sixth month now. I'm carrying a babe. Now it's going on to ninth month now. A babe. You would believe her? You? He says, no. Then you believe this Jewess? 2,000 years ago, she said she heard voices? Naturally not. He said, look, your mother, in the absence of your father, has gone away for many years. She says, you know, she dreamt of your father. And now she's carrying a baby. You know, she's met him in a dream, in the dream. And now she's pregnant and she's carrying a babe. Your mother? I said, you believe her? Would you believe your own mother? You say, no. Then how can you believe this Jewess? 2,000 years ago. I laugh you off. Laugh you to scorn. And there is no better way. Come on, come on. Come forward now. Explain to me how. No, the Muslim can't do that. He, can't, he dare not do that. Because if he accepts this book as the book of God, God tells him that so it was. No arguments. We say, amanna saddatna. We hear and we affirm. So we are made to affirm that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. He was a great miracle worker. And the very first miracle attributed to him in the Holy Quran is to be found in Surah Maryam, that chapter Mary, in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus Christ. It's chapter 19, verse 23. It tells us that after the Annunciation, you know, the good news was given to her, and she carried the babe, and when the time for childbirth came, around that time she retired to a remote place in the east, alone, there's no Joseph the carpenter, and the stable, here. In the Quran, there's no Joseph the carpenter, and there's no stable, here. She retires to a remote place in the east, and after the birth of the child, she returns with the babe, that the Quran describes. See, at length she brought the babe to her people, carrying him in her arms. They said, Oh Mary, truly an amazing thing has thou brought. Shocked, knowing that she comes from a noble priestly family. She was a Levite. And coming from such a noble priestly family, Ya Ukta Haruna, O sister of Harun, a descent from Moses and Aaron, they were Levites, and she's also a Levite, Mary, Ya Ukta Haruna, O sister of Harun, Ma kana Abu Kimra Asawim, Wa ma kanat Ummu Kibagiya, says, Your father was not a man of evil, nor was the mother a woman unchaste. They are insinuating, alleging, how is it that you brought this illegitimate child without a husband? What is she to do? Where is her people? 
in a mood to listen to her, to her reasoning, to her telling you this fairy tale that I heard voices and now I'm getting a babe. Were there in a mood to listen to her? Of course not. Would you be, if you were then 2,000 years ago, would you listen to her? Never. What is she to do? The only thing she knew was the child. She knew that this was no ordinary child. So, she merely pointed to the babe. In other words, ask him. So they say, said, how can we talk to one who's a child in the cradle? An infant, a suckling. How can we talk to him? And by a miracle, says the Quran, Jesus spoke and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. So قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ So most certainly I am the servant of Allah. آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابِ He has given me revelation. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّا And he has made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْسَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَجَعَلَنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيَّا He continues. He says, he's made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. So peace be on me the day that I was born. The day that I die. And the day that I shall be raised to life again. Such was Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God, says the Holy Quran. So I reaffirm that we believe in Jesus Christ as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he was the Messiah. We believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We are going together. We, Muslims and the Christians, are going together. There are 1,200 million Christians in the world today, and 1,000 million Muslims. Over 2 billion people who believe in Jesus. And we are going together. Now comes the parting of the way. See, I would be a hypocrite if I keep on speaking, repeating, you know, all the other beautiful things that the Quran speaks about Jesus and close the meeting. I would be a hypocrite. I would be deceiving you. I have to now tell you that there is a parting of the ways between you and me, between the Christian and the Muslim. And that is, the Muslim is made to say that Jesus Christ is not God. He is not God Almighty in human form. He is not God incarnate, God taking human form. And he is not the begotten Son of God. Metaphorically, we are all the children of God, the good and the bad. We are all his children. But physically, we say God does not beget. Because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. And we are not to attribute such a quality to God. The Christian, in his infatuation, he goes out of his way to say, look, he is the veritable son of God. God begot a son. Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. That is what he says in his catechism. I have read them. The Anglican catechism, the Roman Catholic catechism, the Methodist catechism, the Lutheran catechism, in which we are told that Jesus is the only begotten son of God. And it goes on, it says, begotten, not made. Don't make a mistake. It's not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every dog, pig, and donkey was made by God. As such, he is the Lord, cherisher, sustainer, and evolver of all his creation. He is the father of everything, everybody. But no, Jesus is not like that. He was begotten, not made. And I have been asking Englishmen, English-speaking people. I said, excuse me, please. You see, English is a foreign language to me. I acquired this smattering of what I'm speaking to you now. By speaking, 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 I have become a speaker. So I said, look, please explain to me. When you say in your language, begotten, not made, what are you trying to emphasize? Please explain, and believe me, no Englishman worth the name Englishman has ever opened his mouth to me. I only want an explanation what you're trying to tell me when you say begotten, not made. Because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. So how can you attribute such a quality to God? I can call one of these young men here, or some older than the young men, 
you know, I'm about twice the age of most of you. I'm 69. So any young man says, my son, you mind if I call you my son? Would you mind? You object? No. So I call him my son. Maybe he takes a liking to me after the meeting, he comes closer to me, he invites me home for a cup of tea, I meet my family, and I visit him, and somehow if we are living close by, he visits me, coming and going, he calls me uncle, uncle, or grandpa, grandpa, you know, his father, mother, everybody loves me, respects me, I call him a son, my son, my son. Every time I go to his house, I say, my son, where's the son? My John, my son. So I go one day with some friends, visiting him. I'm asking his mother, where's John, my son? I say, he's just gone to the shop. He's coming just now. So sit down. And he comes. Hello, John. We embrace one another. Hello, John. So my companion, who doesn't know our relationship, is asking me, See, is he re really your son? Maybe a mistress I might have kept, you know, his mother. Is he really your son? I says, no, you see this young man, he loves me like a father, like a grandfather, and I call him a son, out of endearment. And nobody objects. His father doesn't mind, his mother doesn't mind, nobody minds. I says, no, it is out of love and feeling I have for him, I call him a son. But instead, if I said, yes, he is my begotten son, you know the meaning changes. You understand English? I take it. Yes, he is my begotten son, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That is a bastard. 